If you're one of the good guys in a video game, you're generally supposed to go around doing good stuff. I mean, apart from the thousands of killings. Those don't count. Sometimes, though, you find yourself playing as, or allied with, supposed heroes who, knowingly or unknowingly, actually make things much, much worse. Nice job, idiots! Back to Hero Academy for you. Here are seven times supposed video game heroes actually ruined everything. Enjoy and put spoilers ahead for the following games. Now, everything's gonna Seriously? be- Seriously? Think we can just forget about what happened in Louisiana? It happened so long ago. I just- I don't understand why you are so- <sighs> Chris Redfield is one of the most enduring and heroic Resident Evil characters there is, having been introduced in the original Resident Evil as an idealistic stars rookie. I'll go and check it out. Before getting on the whey protein and beating up boulders in Resident Evil 5. <laughs> Chris never even got mind-controlled and went evil, unlike some Resident Evil characters I could name Jill Valentine. Jill! Come on! It's me! Chris! Snap out of it! All of which makes it extremely puzzling how Chris behaves in the most recent game, Resident Evil Village, in which Chris Redfield comes to the house of your character, Ethan Winters, and murders your wife. Mia! Get down! Now it turns out here that this isn't actually Ethan's wife at all, but rather a shape-shifting bioweapon called Miranda. Information you'd think that Chris might want to convey to Ethan before he, you know, started blasting. What the hell are you doing with my daughter? Package secure, sir. Take him away. I said get your hands off her! Ethan, no. But because Chris doesn't let you know any of this, Ethan, instead of going back home to try and sort this whole mess out, presses onwards into the titular village, getting embroiled in a whole Resident Evil game, which we later discover is the exact thing that Chris wanted to avoid happening. It's okay though, because you run into Chris again later at the village reservoir, which is a perfect opportunity for him to explain himself. I gotta say, I'm surprised you made it this far. It'd be a shame if something happened to you now. So sure, Chris, why not? You killed Mia. Now do me and finish the job. Hey, Cap. I'm getting some serious motion readings out here. We should move on. Or not. Jeez, Chris. Is that coat cutting off circulation to your brain? What does the rest of your unit think about this? I know it's too late now, but we really should have told Ethan the plan. Oh, it turns out they too think you should have told Ethan what was going on. Chris does finally explain what is happening towards the end of the game, but not before Ethan has, obviously, flung himself spanner-like into the works, desperately trying to rescue his daughter, who he thinks Chris kidnapped, and avenge his wife, who he thinks Chris killed. <laughs> oh look, Ethan's dead. If only someone had told him what was going on, and to hang tight because a trained anti-bioterror unit was on it. But there was simply no time. My father would always go on about the vault, even with his dying breath. Advanced alien technology, infinite wealth, fame, power, women. So you can understand why some little kiddos who hear the stories grow up to become vault hunters. In Borderlands, you play as one of four fortune-seeking vault hunters, scouring the planet of Pandora for a legendary horde of precious alien technology called the Vault. All right, back there, time to wake up. <laughs> it's a beautiful day, full of opportunity. There is Brick the Berserker, Lilith the Siren, Mordecai the Hunter, and Roland the Soldier, all of whom seem like nice folks. I mean, yes, apart from the thousands of killings, as before. As you make your way through the game, you're spoken to by a mysterious woman known as the Guardian Angel, who gives you advice, guides you to the vault, and makes it clear that you need to be the first ones there. And what you're doing could save the very planet itself. You don't have any reason to trust me. 
But I need you to believe that I'm here to guide you. I'm here to help you find the vault. After much looting and shooting, you eventually make it to the game's finale, where your efforts lead to the unlocking of the fabled vault. Yeah, the key works! Sergeant, get your team ready to go inside. And that's when you discover that the vault isn't a treasure trove full of valuable alien gadgets and limitless wealth, but actually a prison full of horrible alien monster called the Destroyer, who was locked inside centuries ago to prevent the destruction of the universe. And you just let it out. Good job, team. Don't give up. This creature may be immortal in its own realm, but in this reality, it cannot survive without a host. That makes it vulnerable. Because shooting stuff is your best and only solution to whatever life throws at you, you manage to shoot and kill the horrible alien monster. But regrettably, that doesn't fix the ruin caused by your credulous squad of gun likers. That's because the opening of the vault triggers the planet wide growth of a priceless purple mineral called Iridium, which Borderlands celebre villain Handsome Jack swoops on, becoming fabulously rich and powerful in the process. So by the beginning of Borderlands 2, Pandora is an even more oppressive wasteland than ever, with the beleaguered Pandorans living under the rule of the mighty Hyperion Corporation, led by Handsome Jack, from a massive space station called Helios. It's cute that y'all think you're the heroes of this little adventure, but you're not. Welcome to Pandora, kiddos. Which probably wouldn't have happened if you'd all just stayed on the bus, team. Plus, I bet it had air conditioning as well. Foolish all round. Scorpion, stop! As with any character who's been around for over 30 years, Scorpion from Mortal Kombat has changed a bit since he was first introduced. In 1992's Mortal Kombat, he was basically yellow Sub-Zero, but better because he was an undead revenant with a harpoon and could pull his face off and breathe fire. Scorpion win. By the time of 2015's Mortal Kombat X, however, Scorpion had been resurrected in his human form of Hanzo Hasashi, and is seeking revenge against the sorcerer Quan Chi, who murdered his family, and to a lesser extent, him. Towards the end of Mortal Kombat X's story mode, the Earthrealm heroes capture Quan Chi and are ready to bring him in for interrogation. Hanzo has other plans though, and after a brief diversion to beat up Sonya for being in his way, he decapitates Quan Chi. But somehow not before Quan Chi is able to use an amulet to release Shinnok, the much worse evil sorcerer who was trapped in said amulet. The real kicker here is that Quan Chi was the only person who was able to resurrect Kitana, Liu Kang, and Kung Lao, beloved series regulars from the early days of the franchise who are now stuck as horrible revenants, trapped in a nightmarish living death forever. Praise be to Lord Shinnok. Let us be on our way. Okay, time for a new main, I think. Sub-Zero may not be able to breathe fire, but at least he didn't screw over Earthrealm this badly. Plus, blue is more my colour. Goes with my eyes. Link from the Legend of Zelda games is mostly a pretty heroic little dude, on account of how he's usually a child who has to sword fight murder skeletons and werewolves. You'd probably be less inclined to think fondly of Link, however, if you lived on Koholint Island, the setting for the Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. Koholint is a bustling tropical paradise with thriving village communities, both for people and animals. as well as beautiful forests, mountains, and beaches. It even has a library, a telephone exchange, a health spa, and a shop with an efficient, if perhaps slightly overbearing, justice system. Tough but fair. So, Coalent Island, a nice place, and one that Link is working the entire game to destroy. That's because Link, trapped on Koholint, is labouring to escape the place and return to Hyrule by waking the sleeping Windfish, a flying whale god who created the island. 
However, Coho Lint only exists within the mind of the windfish, which will vanish when he wakes up, taking all its inhabitants, businesses and animals with it. So bear that in mind when you assemble the necessary instruments to wake old WF, because while Link might make it back to Hyrule, you've also blinked hundreds of people out of existence. was also the ending of Lost, wasn't it? I forget. If I discovered a planet where an ancient civilization had sealed a mysterious and powerful extraterrestrial biohazard inside a crater, I would personally leave that crater alone. But that's why I'm just some schmo who makes YouTube videos and not the legendary galactic bounty hunter Samus Aran, who in Metroid Prime finds herself on the planet of Talon 4. Many years ago, a meteor crashed down on Talon 4, bringing with it a radioactive mutagenic ooze called Phazon and an evil creature known as the Worm. The Chozo race that inhabited the planet were wiped out, but not before sealing shut the meteor's impact crater, locking the creature and its evil influence away via 12 Chozo artifacts. Being a video game protagonist, Samus has no choice but to collect those 12 artifacts, unlock the heart of the impact crater, and check out what's going on inside. What's going on inside is a massive eldritch space spider which should have been left well alone inside its crater prison and, I'm sorry, looks nothing like a worm. Since Samus has no choice at this point but to heroically kick its ass, she heroically kicks its ass, through both its original spidery exoskeleton form and its true form, that of a translucent hovering space squid. Again, not a worm. Aside from the space squid in its death throes nicking Samus's fancy black Phazon suit, this appears to have been an overall successful trip to Talon 4. They say any boss fight you can walk away from while it explodes behind you is a good boss fight. Except, actually, Samus leaves behind a surviving radioactive glob of leftover boss goo which, having absorbed Samus's suit and traces of her DNA, now reconstitutes itself as her evil alien monster twin, Dark Samus. This Dark Samus is more powerful and deadlier than the worm ever was and, crucially, is no longer sealed inside a remote meteor crater. expect to see plenty more of her as she runs riot through the rest of the galaxy, becoming over the next two games the chief bad guy of the entire Metroid Prime trilogy. Oops. What did I tell you? Stay away from meteor craters full of radioactive ooze. This should be common sense, people. Oh, yeah, hey, hey, we. When it comes to solo games, Mario's brother Luigi gets something of a raw deal. Where Mario gets, for example, Mario Sunshine set in the tropical paradise of Delfino Island, Luigi gets Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, which is set in a decrepit haunted house full of ghosts who are trying to kill him. Luigi isn't alone in his quest, however. He's aided by fellow hero Professor E. Gad, a brainy boffin who oversees Luigi's ghost-catching missions from his lab, develops new ghost-catching technology for Luigi to use, and talks like a Jawa trying to have a whispered argument in a cinema. <laughs> Dark Moon is in fact the second game in the Luigi's Mansion series. The first one ended with you battling top ghost King Boo and imprisoning him in a painting so he couldn't get up to any more ghostly mischief. Mm -hmm. 
But in Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, King Boo is back somehow. So how did he get out of his painting and back to ruining Luigi's life? Well, turns out that your old pal and co-protagonist of this game, Professor E. Gad, sold the painting at a garage sale rather than hanging onto it or locking it away or, say, setting it on fire. <laughs> Still, at least Egad is getting his hands dirty, getting back in that scary mansion and trying to undo all the terrible ruin he's caused. Oh no, that's right, he's making Luigi do it all while he sits in his nice, warm, comfortable lab. Honestly, this would never happen to Mario. Hey there, true believers! Watch as once again, frightening forces are at work in our world, ready to wreak havoc with our very existence. Who or what prowls the halls of Empire State University after dark? Part of Spider-Man's appeal is that he does screw up on occasion, which makes him relatable. Like when he's late for work because of crime-fighting duties, or when he face plants during a hostage situation and everyone dies. See? Relatable. That being said, it's hard to imagine how Spider-Man could have ruined things more thoroughly than at the start of Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions, where our friendly neighbourhood wall crawler has a set to with fishbowl wearing special effects artist Mysterio. True to form, Mysterio is here in this New York City museum to steal a most dangerous prize, an ancient artefact known as the Tablet of Order and Chaos. <sighs> the Tablet of Order and Chaos. Selling you on the black market is gonna make me a mint. Good, you can use a mint. That sounds like the sort of thing you'd maybe want to avoid damaging, partially because it's a literal museum piece full of historical and cultural value, and partially because it's glowing green and emitting weird smoke. And that's usually not a good thing in Spider-Man video games. What? What's this? Anyway, displaying that relatable idiocy, super genius Peter Parker decides to punch the Tablet of Order and Chaos as hard as he possibly can, shattering it into pieces. Which is bad, but it'll probably turn out alright, right? I mean, it's not like the Tablet of Order and Chaos is the most powerful of all the mystic artifacts in the world or anything. The Tablet of Order and Chaos is the most powerful of all the mystic artifacts in the world. Ah. Now, the multiverse is shattered, and Spider-Man has to team up with three other Spider-Mans to stop reality from being destroyed. All because he was having a fight with Mysterio, a villain who, we remind you, went out like this in the last Spider-Man game he appeared in. You rock so hard, Spidey! Feels like maybe you could have toned it down a little bit, Pete. No, oh, uh, I, I give up. Don't, don't hit me again. Thank you so much for watching this video about video game heroes who actually ruined everything with their thoughts and deeds. And now, for me to not ruin this video, I could ruin this video right now. I could say, no, I could say something appalling and then it would get demonetized by YouTube. I'm not gonna, though. But what I will do is say, watch one of these two videos. Um, and this one is from us, this one is from Outside Extra. Um, they're both very good, and I have no strong opinions or swears to say. Thank you.